Hello, this is Diane Elkins of Artisan eLearning and eLearningUncovered.com. Today I'm going to show you the basics of creating a drag and drop question in Lectora. A drag and drop question has two basic components the stuff you drag and the stuff you drag it to. For example, in this question, the student drags text labels onto a diagram image. In this example, the student drags images to a larger image. These are the drag items, and this is the drop item. Each drag and drop question has one drop item, and it must be an image. Each question can have multiple drag items, and they can either be images, as in this case, or text boxes, as in this case. Before assembling the question in Lectora, you'll need to get your graphics together. For these examples, I put my graphics together in PowerPoint and then saved them as graphics using Snagit. Here are a few considerations when creating your graphics. With drag and drop questions, I found that it's best to resize the images before creating the question, rather than sizing them on screen in Lectora. It just seems to be easier that way. Also, it is best to make all of your drag items the same size. The drop spot is the same size as the drag item itself. So if the items are different sizes, then the live drop spots are different sizes, and it might give the answer away to the student. Next, make sure it is very clear to the student where they are supposed to drop the image. Remember that the drop spot is the same size as the drag item. So if this was the diagram, the student wouldn't know where in each quadrant to drop the item. A simple frame that is the same size as the drag item makes it very clear. Finally, remember that there can only be one item dropped in any given spot. A common drag and drop activity is what I call buckets, where you have items that go into one bucket or another, like this. However, this exact approach doesn't work in Lectora because each drag item has to go to one exact spot. You can't have several items floating around in a larger space. You have to pick a specific place where the item goes, and you might decide that the first item goes on top and the second item goes on the bottom, but the student has no way of knowing that and is very likely to get it wrong as a result. However, you can still accomplish the same instructional objective. Just create visuals that make it clear which item goes into which spot. Now that the graphics are ready, let's create the questions. From the question wizard, select a drag and drop question. The beginning starts off like any question where you put in your question and instructions. Down at the bottom is where you include your drop image. Let's do the bagging example. Now you've got a number of other question settings that you are hopefully used to. But specifically for the drag and drop, you want to indicate the number of drag items you want, and if you want any distractors. A distractor is either a drag item that doesn't belong anywhere on the graphic, or a hot spot in the graphic that nothing belongs to. For example, with the bagging question, we could add a fourth item of a steak that shouldn't go in any of those bags. And for the exempt example, there are four drop spots that will be blank. The rest of this screen is the same as for other questions. We'll just do some simple feedback in the interest of time. Now you add your drag items. You can add text, a graphic, or both. For the bagging example, we'll add graphics. Once you add the drag item, then you need to indicate where the drag item belongs. Click the Place Drop Point button and drag the item where you want it. You can also use the arrow keys for more precise control. Click OK and then continue the same way through the rest of the wizard. When you are done, all of your elements are on the page and you simply need to lay them out how you want them. Keep this in mind when you are creating your graphics. You need to have room for your drop image, all of your drag items, your instructions, plus any other on-screen elements.
Now let's see how it works. Finally, let's put together the exempt question, which uses text boxes as drag items and has distractors. We start the same way and add the drop image. For this exercise, there is a correct spot and an incorrect spot for each of the drag items. That means there are four drag drop pairs and four distractors. Now as we set each one up, you can enter the text for the drag items. When I'm doing text, I don't place the items the first time through. That's because I'm going to resize and format the text boxes. So I'll come back and place them after I do that. Once I'm done with my four drag drop pairs, I can do my four distractors. I have to first indicate if I want a drag item distractor or a drop point distractor. The extra stake item on the bagging example would be a drag item distractor. But in this case, I want extra placeholders in the diagram, so that's a drop point distractor. So I select that from the drop down menu and then place it. I repeat the process for the rest of the distractors. Now all of the elements are on the page. To make the question more attractive and a little easier to use, I'm going to format the text boxes and size them to the exact size as the placeholder, which I measured when I made it. Now that they are the final size, I can go back into the question wizard and place each of the drop points. Now my question is ready to try out. Drag and drop questions are a great way to add interactivity to your titles. Just be sure to put a little planning in up front to think about your design, the graphics, and the usability so that it will be easy for you to set up and easy for your students to use.